And we are back for game number two, or series number two, depending on which game you do like to follow, because we are in the midst of our first week of the NECC League of Legends season. Very, very excited. Once again, we are here to enjoy some amazing League of Legends. Actually, I can talk, don't worry. Because, of course, we are getting into the Bison versus UND matchup. Another series that will, again, potentially give us a glimpse into some of the top performers this season. In fact, we should give them their full names, Orbital, because it's not yes. just Bison. It's North Dakota State University Bisons up against the University of North Dakota Black. So <laughs> both college teams are coming in from North Dakota. Now, I don't know if there's any connection between the two, but in my experience, generally, if they're that close, yeah. <laughs> more often than not, there's some beef there. <laughs> Only a little. Only a little. You know, there there is a chance, of course, uh, there, there are some... Other options here, because I believe these two teams may or may not be fresh into the season with the NECC, and either way, it is a brand new start to the season as well. A lot of champions that are going to be joining in and are available as well that were not available in the activation period. But taking a look down the lineups, I believe Bisons are looking a little bit uh, enjoyable to say the least. <laughs> Enjoyable is an interesting choice there. Uh, this is actually, I okay, it says Bison Green, but I'm looking at UND's names there. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the names are actually, those are a mix of UND's players as well as, was that UAH's players? <laughs> yeah, I, I saw so. Doug and Arthur, no, Concord, so. Concord. Hold on. Oh man, it was it was a mixture. It, it was it was so crazy and knocked my camera out of focus. It was great. Uh, taking a look at things though, yeah, we will get that going for you. Uh, going down the list for Bison, I believe, we have Bimudana, uh, which I like, uh, Chanter, Green Guy, Chaos Theory, Pugas Wilkes, Storm Stars, and Without Truth. As the current listed players, we will see which five are currently lined up for us here tonight. Yeah, so I believe they're also uh, having a substitution in the top lane specifically. So Pugas Wilkes is not playing tonight. It'll be Josh Peckin uh, into the top lane instead. And I believe their roster was Green Guy in the jungle, Storm Stars in the mid lane, Chaos Theory, and Without Truth in the bot lane. So very strong roster, actually. Uh, we are in the Challengers Heartland division. We went from East to Heartland. But for a Challengers roster, the lowest rank on their starters is looking like a plat one. And that's the sub. Like, everybody is Emerald or up. And that leads me to believe that it is going to be a strong team. Now, taking a look at UND Black on the other side, they are looking at some other fun, very, very uh, enjoyable names, I should say the least. What I have listed, and we, uh, of course, RMC, you can confirm this here in just a bit. But for those listed, we have, please fix MMR. I would like that as well. My current account is tanked. It's not not in a good spot. Listen, I'm losing like 40 every round. Please fix MMR. Uh, Mossman3424, Pickle Me Elmo, Ramus, Sarah, Washo, and Zero31 as the other members of this team. So I believe the starters are at least the ones in the lobby currently are. Uh, Pickle Me Elmo, Please Fix MMR, Zero, Sarah, and Waz Show. So oh, we're going to have fun saying Pickle Me Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, did, you ever, did you ever have one of those like Tickle Me Elmo toys? Uh, no, but I had Furbies, and they're probably just as terrifying. Honestly, they were, they were some not, they were some toys that conjured up demonic visions at night when you didn't want them to. It was not good. Let's put it this way: it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a miss to create a Tickle Me Elmo Timo skin. <laughs> they're kind of equivalent. So we'll see how that goes. Pickle Me Elmo, your name's kind of funny, but also brings up trauma. Uh, we are getting shit <laughs> into picks and bans, so, and it is going to be UND Black on the blue side for game one. Bison Green going for the red side. Yes. And of course, taking a look, uh, as we said, this is going to be UND having a little bit of an uphill challenge. They're no, by no means slouches on their end. But in individual lane matchups, we are going to just be kind of curious to watch how it unfolds. Right now, though, we are getting some uh, very select bands here. The Azir is pretty standard. The Briar also, mm -hmm. if you are not used to playing against it, it's understandable. Yeah. However, the Shivana and the Lilia just <laughs> uh, kind of leave a couple question marks. And then the Ash, of course, uh, standard band there. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bison Green is trying to fix MMR a little bit here. Uh, just banning bit. out the just jungle bit. champions. Yeah, T target bans actually on to please uh, fix MMR. And it's interesting too because Shivana and Lily are both champions that can kind of carry a game on their own back if they can get a couple of kills. So they're really trying to shut down please fix MMR's ability to solo carry and force them to switch more to a sort of supportive utility role for the team. Uh, J4, okay, just got nerfed. I believe it was last patch a little bit. He's really, really strong with the sort of Gore Drinker uh, and Shoujin item changes that came in a couple patches ago. So I like the pickup that we saw from UND here. 
not just that, the follow up in the mid lane. This is Alessandra and Oriana, two great team fight champions, great setup champions as well. A little bit more pick on the side of UND. They have a bit more, uh, I, I want to say, all in, just crush you kind of thing uh, where you stand. On the flip, we are seeing in the bands, some other bands come out the Shen and the uh, Leah. These are two that, of course, as we said, we do have prior knowledge, at least you and I, RMC. They are picking in positional for right now. But the bands do mm -hmm. suggest that we had on the side of UND. Some pickups and some left open options in the mid and top side. <laughs> yeah, the bot lanes starting to come through and already, oh my god, okay. I, I love what Bison Green have done already. They, they dropped a very strong team fighting core. When you pick up an Orianna with sort of engaged tools, that's always nice, but picking a Callista is spicy. She's actually pretty strong. Her leading phase has always been good. The problem is her scaling isn't amazing. And when I look at this comp for Bison Green right now, this is not about scaling whatsoever. You've got a Renekton, you've got a Callista, you're all about smashing your lanes and coming together in the mid lane and just team fighting, death balling with this Orianna, literally in the case of her Shockwave, if she can land into multiple members. Mm -hmm. And what you're praying for is really just who gets a better engage off. You take a look down the line, the, uh, the <clears throat> Leona to round it off, this is by far, we were talking about in game number one and series number one about how game two was kind of like everyone just collapse in and get a massive AoE off. This yeah. is exemplified to the higher degree. I mean, the J4 is the trying to chew, the Lissandra is the trying to chew, the Leona. These have all been around since like season three and four. This is UND pulling into it. And then this is Juani on the other side. I expect to see the Glacial Prison. Like, I, if they don't ran their heads against each other at 15 minutes, just trying to run it down a lane, <laughs> I will be very, very sad. <laughs> Yeah, and especially with this sort of Lissandra, with the lack of physical damage as well uh, for the side of UND, I wouldn't be surprised if the Kaiser is an AD Kaiser coming through, mm -hmm. not that poke AP Kaiser. So that means that not only at a death ball, but they're a very short range composition coming through from UND into an Oriana, into a Kalista, into a Brom. We talked about Brom last series as well and how effective he is at stopping at gauges, at being one of the best counter engage supports in the game. Well, it's definitely going to stifle what UND Black are going to try and bring to the table with their composition. So I almost hope that UND Black doesn't just ran, not say randomly, but doesn't just <laughs> full heartedly try and force engages. Cause I think it will go very poorly for them if they don't pick their engages properly. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very conscious of, do I actually want to go in on this one? You get one shot before the other side gets to fire a barrage of their own. I also want to draw eyes once again to those summoner spells because this bot lane, every time we've now gotten, I think a different mix and match. <laughs> A summoner spells, right? Uh, in the first game of the day, we had, I think it was a Flash Ghost on the Ash and a, and a Flash Ignite versus, I think it was Heal and Exhaust. And now we are getting some other deranged form. And I say that with all the love of my heart because <laughs> Flash Exhaust is also a very aggressive stance. You might not think so, but that is on a Kai'Sa. Like, I'm going to go in and try and duel you and hopefully get a 1v1. <laughs> hey, that's what Kai'Sa do, right? Yeah. The role that she is in AD carry, she is more of an assassin she and vane don't operate like traditional ad carries a lot of their damage is burst related and it's actually about hunting down the other ad carry and popping them uh, as fast as things go now against Callista, that gets complicated because Callista often builds things like shield bow and in terms of actually 1v1ing uh, she's not bad she can stack those spears fairly quickly and then rend you and again to me it doesn't come down to the 1v1 either it comes down to the brom because Sure, you know, Callista isn't running the Exhaust and the heal. I believe she's running a cleanse. But as long as Brom's anywhere near her, Brom is right on top of her. Because especially with the ultimate from Callista, you just kind of pull him in wherever he is and just drop him right on top of that Kaisa. If Kaisa doesn't one-shot you, well, Kaisa doesn't get a second shot. Mm -hmm. No chances whatsoever. That's why the cleanse is in there just saying, hey, let's go ahead and make sure I can force feed my way into a second chance or maybe like a half a chance, if you will. Taking a look at the rest of the lanes as well, TP on the... Uh, on the Cassante as well, which surprisingly I just heard through the grapevine, there should be a rework coming through on him as well, which will be very interesting to see. Uh, mid lane as well, having TPs. This is a party side, and it's surprising to see Lissandra twice. I think again, to me, I will always see Lissandra as a low power controller mid laner that is seen as the catalyst to engages. But to see it come out twice is a little bit surprising, especially since I think you and I were talking off the side. Damage kind of rules in the current meta. Lissandra does not does not top the charts in that, I would say. Yeah, I'd argue like, damage uh, is either king or 
the counter to that specific damage is king. And Lissandra did get a buff this patch, we're on 1319, which is Rhodes patch, but the buff wasn't to her damage numbers. It was actually to her W root duration. It's like 0.15 seconds at max rank. It's very, very, or just across the board, actually. It's, it's very minor. Um, what puzzles me more is that, despite what we saw in the draft order, as we mentioned, that was a positional draft. In the actual draft, the Lissandra was a counterpick to the Orianna. Or supposed to be the counter pick, but Oriana, but Lissandra isn't a counter to Oriana in the first place. In fact, with the ranges and how it operates, Oriana can really zone out a Lissandra. So it feels like a very odd pickup for me. It feels like something that would be good to counter a specific target. And then I look across to what Bison have drafted. The only target you really want to use that Frozen Tomb on is going to be that Kalista for Chaos Theory. And with that cleanse as well, I just have a lot of questions about how effective that particular pick is going to be. Well, you know what, if it's not effective in lane, maybe you can break it out into the mid to late game, you know, when laning doesn't really matter. On the top side, though, I think is where we're going to get one of the bigger disparities, not just in the champions, but also in the play style. As we all know, whenever you bring in a sub, it's always kind of interesting. It's like, hey, is a sub mm -hmm. one that you practice with, or is it just someone that you have brought in? Not just that. Cassante versus a Renekton is one that I think we've seen multiple times, but it is a distinct well, difference in how you want ready. that early stage to go. So as we get onto the Rift, it will be quite fun to see who goes ahead and takes this first game. I think specifically, Cassante Renekton has evolved throughout Cassante's lifetime. Because when yeah. Cassante came out, he was busted. Everybody was picking him. Nobody could quite figure out how to lane against him. Then people started picking up Renekton because Renekton is just generically strong in lane. Uh, has ways and tools of actually trading with Cassante. And then we start seeing pros kind of say, no, Cassante is the counter pick. So Cassante Renekton is a very common matchup we see. And that to me is a skill matchup as well. Alberto, this is game one of a best of three. So for both these top laners to kind of go with a matchup that is very, very skill-based will not just tell us a lot about how this game might go, but how this series might go. I think if one of these players can win the top lane in isolation, they can start picking more skill-expressive champions in the rest of the series. Litmus test game number one, break out the big flask in game number two, and if you have to, go nuclear in game three. You know, that's, that's the way it tends to break down. Taking a look at things though, it's a generic start as well. Both junglers getting help on the bottom side of the map, meaning they will most likely fight unless we do get a two buff start or maybe a cheesy level two gank from Please Fix. But for right now, it does seem to be the stock standard buff to a little bit of a challenge. Ooh, okay, I did say level two, but I didn't think it'd be towards the okay. mid lane. A chance and a half, getting it close, good draw in. A good flash out. Storm Star says, really? We're playing this game today. I really appreciate that because J4 is one of the few junglers that has a very effective level 2 gank. And I kind of hate it when I see people just full clear with that J4. Throw down that little bit of cheese. It's really effective. Bot lane, though, one thing we didn't touch on. We kind of mentioned that Kalista Brom, very strong 2v2. They're expected to win this out. But let's talk about the why. The meats and potatoes of this. Because Without Truth just showed us why. Brom is very strong against melee champions he's one of the best he's great at stopping the end gauge as well and early on his base stats are high so before leona gets an eclipse or her w if she doesn't scale into that she can't really step up and deal with that brom and then you pair that with the Callista, who has really high base damages and a lot of the damage is tied to how many stacks she can put onto you with that spear as well i don't expect to see und uh, have any sort of priority in this bot lane without jungle pressure and please fix mmr he started bot. He's popping top. He's not going down there anytime soon. Nope. Not unless he wants to waste a lot of time. And even uh, without Truth and Chaos Theory, we'll also be able to identify it. Of course, one of the not-so-talked-about abilities out of a Kai'Sa is... Or not a Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa, jeez. Okay, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> you know, I'm... Listen, on the hunt, saver, whatever. Uh, talking about the ghouls that float around, <laughs> it gives an added little bonus. But because, again, it's not worried about the bot side. It's the constant engage on the mid but on the bot side the watch show said hey i want to have a show okay, that's a double so jump forward they're going to jump forward again and the exhaust go down but that double exhaust means that chaos theory is allowed to live however without truth wants to fight back just a little bit can't get the third proc once again down and because of that it is just going to be chaos theory looking Ooh. like death a jump in the watch show might have gone a little bit too far they forward a couple more rounds might more. do it but no they live and because of that sarah is now bouncing between two targets the ward. but the that is very, very dangerous. One more hit. Oh, there. there it is. The flash forward. It is going to be challenging. Wait, it is going to be a double no! kill. Two kills because of a slight mishap to the side of the Bisons. 
Oh, that was a game of inches for both of these bot lanes. But hold up, green guy into the mid lane. They did spot please fix MMR, so Bison's no it's a 2v2. And they've just disengaged. Okay, back to the bot lane. Because let's talk about that and what just happened there. Washo did not need to die. But despite their death, Sira is still going to be ahead for getting that first blood. And the damage that they were kind of able to put down as well was really, really massive. And for the Bisons, I'm surprised that they kind of opted to turn around there. I thought they'd just keep walking away. But the ward in that bush made it such that Chaos Theory just couldn't, wouldn't be able to win that fight. Oh, uh, well, you know, who definitely can't win a fight is uh, a little bit of a dangerous mid. Storm Stars has now defied three different ganks. I would like to point that out. That is three ganks that have been thrown down in the mid lane, specifically. And Storm Stars is just like, bruh, really? I'm getting this treatment again? <laughs> it's funny, Overlord. You started that with, you know, who's not going to defy their fate? Who, Overlord? Please right. tell me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Storm Stars, Storm Stars played that incredibly well, uh, and that speaks to the Oriana Lissandra matchup. That's why I was curious about the Lissandra so-called counter pick here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you do go the Electrocute, which is nice, but at this point, the fighting is starting to branch out. As long as Zero is sitting in that base, it will be a big question mark. I think they were waiting. Yep, there it is. The last uh, lost chapter is set, mm -hmm. but because Storm Stars did TP, it looks like Zero is going to try and hang tight to that TP. Get ready for a later, maybe a minute seven or eight. Yeah, I mean, Storm Stars isn't hard pushing that lane anyway, so Zero will be able to walk back to lane in time to catch uh, most, if not all, of those minions. And holding on to that TP for a potential team fight later could be massive. Dragon uh, is up and available right now. Herald soon to follow in a couple of minutes. And considering how this bot lane has gone, if we don't see a TP or a gank coming through from UND, then it's most likely going to be a Bison Dragon just based off this bot lane pressure. And I mean, a little extra uh, attack speed and uh, ability haste would not be bad, right? Yes, it's only what, I think five each. It's not that big of a deal, but it, it, it would be nice. You know, I'd like to see it at least. For right now though, as you said, you can see the pings going down from Bison saying, okay, let's go ahead get some information. Let's get those Sentinels walking around. Let's ensure that we're not gonna have any problems there. Oh. These six though, making their rotate towards the top side, Jungler is deciding to meet. Oh, this will be interesting. Nah, they just walked past yeah. the <laughs> Well, fights in both top and mid. Now, poor cameraman's gotta decide which one we're looking at, but yeah, uh, both junglers opted to just kind of walk away at the end of things. Uh, Please fix MMR has been a little bit more active on these early ganks, but it is worth noting that despite the nerfs to Sejuani's damage, she's still very, very effective against melee champions, especially when she's got one herself to be able to proc that stun more effectively. So Green Guy doesn't necessarily want to gank or fight, but just be there to stop Please fix MMR from being able to get his ganks off. With all these tests, it feels like this might chance into that dragon where we get the first uh, encapsulating fight. I know you were talking about, you know, uh, set up by UND, but this is going to be a challenge back. Ult for ult now, and a dance out of the tower. Ooh, that might be the turning Josh. tide. Josh has to walk away. Great heal on the top end to not allow Pickle to fight back. But, ooh, that was chancy, chancy, chancy. And because of that, Pickle actually has a lead in the HP department. Yeah, these turrets and people just ever so slightly overextending have been kind of the name of the game. Uh, Let's show taking the extra turret shot. Now Josh taking the turret shot. If not for that, Josh probably didn't need to pop Dominus right there and could have held it for kill threat. We're into the bot side. Almost the steal. Ooh, very, very close. But because you took that chance, it will be a death. Please fix said, please fix my smite. Oh, very much like that. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Props to Please Fix MMR, because keep yeah. <laughs> in mind too, you're not just smite fighting the enemy jungler. There's a Callista on the other team, and we talked about the spear rending on champions, but against objectives, that was one of Callista's greatest strengths, is that if she starts an objective, her rend can be higher than a smite, especially in the early game. So, for Please Fix MMR, you know, yeah, going to a really, really rough spot, and he almost got it. That was so low on that steal. And the fact that that's even allowed to get that close feels like something that I can put a little bit of fear, right? Bisons may not want to go for some of those aggressives later. They might be like, okay, do we really want to keep testing it? Yes, we got it, but is it really necessary to put ourselves in that position? I would say Green Guy, though, has put themselves in a very nice position for a game. I mean, they're walking literally face first into this. Are, are you serious? Green Guy has not moved. Know. This is so, so scary. There's a jump oh. in. Flash, exhaust is up. They're going to try and dance it. But of course, Waz Show says, I'm getting out. You know what? The fact that they got away only burning two flashes and not the exhausting night, very impressive.
Well, the fact they did die and watch yeah. a great step in to block the knockup from Green Kai or that was Sarah did to right. So well played from UND. They are still going to lose plates. And while all that happened, while the setup for that was happening, Orbital, we missed the kill. Stormstar soloed zero in the mid lane. This Orianna is becoming a problem. Normally we think of Orianna as a team fighting champion, but if she's starting to win lane, it's only going to get worse when they actually start grouping out of lane. <laughs> And I just want to point out how much has been stacked against Stormstars, right? Number one, you got counterpicked. You picked Oriana, which I will always consider as a very just generic champion, right? It's the one that you place down and pray that it does okay. Um, second oh. is you got ganked three freaking times. You got put on your back in what feels like multiple and you're still up CS. That is a fantastic goal. However, because of that kill in the mid lane, it still lends itself to zero getting back with a slight recall faster for the time and being able to help sec uh, secure that Harold. Yeah, this is good recognition from Please Fix MMR as well that hey, bot lane green guy showed they're not going to be able to go to that Harold in time. Let's quickly make this play on the top side of the map uh, where we still have pressure of sorts, even if we don't necessarily uh, have kills or major advantages. Top lane is just going at it again. Outs are up and available. Mm -hmm. And then also steel plated boot caps are very, very nice to have. However, Pickle Me almost said, hey, I can dance this very, very well. Pickle Me is ready for that dash, trying to make sure it doesn't happen. But oh, because you waited it? too long and you didn't ult, Josh oh. just said, cool. That's going to be a slap. That's going to be an oh, ult my as well. Goodness. The edge helps secure the kill. Green guy with the assist. Okay, I've heard that certain cities like New York or Chicago might have problems with gators in the sewers. Is Dakota <laughs> like the North Dakota? Because they have a gator problem right now in the top lane. Josh, with those two kills, it's going to become a menace. He got both of them without items. On this back, once he gets those plates as well, he might very well be the first mythic on the map. Oh, it could be there. That's a very, very early cleanse, though, on the bot side. Bot side also trying to challenge back. Oh, that zero. might be a second one. Storm starts. We did a quick flip there. That's the second solo kill in less than five minutes. Gonna be honest, I did not have solo lanes finding tons of solo kills pre-14 <laughs> minutes on my bingo card. I mean, okay, with these maybe, comps too? What? Maybe with Josh, yeah, but Oriana, hell <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have another one in this bot side. That's gonna be no cleanse, no chance, no is shot enough? at all. Oh, Exhaust no, is gonna do it. One more auto takes it, and Washo stays alive. Bot side is exploding with death as well, and Sarah is looking for a second. If they can pick it up, that will be a third overall, but no, the brown is a little bit too tanky. Jeez. I actually thought the bot lane should be winning for Bisons, but yeah, Sarah and Washo are playing oh this so incredibly well. Without Truth, unfortunately, also not quite landing the Glacial Fissure uh, on Washo, which was critical for that bot lane fight. Despite that, though, Chaos Theory is still up CS, and I feel like UND needs to double down on this bot lane. If your bot lane's finding kills, but all your other lanes are falling apart, go do that bot lane. Go to the one lane where you have a chance to get these successful ganks off and start the comeback from there. I mean, that's what we would hope to see. However, a little bit of wandering around. Please Fix is not only behind in Desk, but also behind in CS. They have not been able to farm up as much as they would like. They're currently five camps yeah. behind as well. And that is damaging, right? Especially as a J4, you tried to expend a lot of resources into the early stages. Because of that, you have now negated your smite. These next objectives are going to be very, very damaging if you are not careful. Granted, still 10 stacks on Green Guy, but it's not too bad uh we do have a couple tech audio issues so we'll go ahead and fix that real quick because we are getting in to this game and it's starting to get into the thick of it yeah and we should talk a little bit because you mentioned that please fix uh please fix mmr is struggling on the j4 a little bit falling behind but we talked about the composition of und black how they've got really good engage and brom was already going to be a problem uh, for them but another problem with dive compositions or these sort of death ball comps is that if you fall behind and you can't win you often don't have an alternative sort of victory condition. It's either you win team fights or you die in those team fights. And right now, if both your solo laners are falling apart, if your jungle is falling apart, and your bot lane's got kills, but it isn't getting an experience or CS lead, I'm worried for UND Black when we actually start trying to fight these objectives when turrets start to go down. Not just that, we're also seeing a little bit of a burn in the Lissandra as well. I didn't, I, I know it's not that big of a thing. However, when you go with the electrocute you expect damage at all times that's at least what i think we saw a build into the leandries as well so this lissandra that was gaining so many uh acceptable resources gaining all of the extra pieces right granted the three ganks and even sacrificing the bot side a little bit as well to try and break it off might not have that burst in the mid game that you're really hoping for so as you said the falling apart a little bit or not having that exceptional boost 
may or may not come back to bite them. So, of course, we still have to wait and see. There can still be some fights that go awry, and Bisons kind of lead themselves into a rough patch. But it's really not in the hands of UND. <laughs> Yeah, and we've seen, if you think back to last series as well, just because you're losing the early game doesn't mean you've lost the entire game. Though, I do agree with what you're saying. It's kind of out of UND Black's hands a little bit. It feels like Bison needs to make some mistakes uh, to be able to capitalize on it, but they have. It's not like Bison's played a perfect game either currently. They've played a very, very good game, but there are still opportunities to take advantage of, especially in the laning phase, because numbers still matter a lot. Mm -hmm. And I mean, numbers are what win you the overall pressure around the drake four currently circled around teleports are up in the top liners to make it five but i mean really all you can do is go for a seal please fix is looking around it's down to about 1k i don't think he got it no you yeah. don't out you go but green guy Ooh. says i want to challenge they jump forward and they're gonna look to okay. fight Cuddles and grabs two into the solo flare that's two multi-stuns but out they go with the problem again the as you said without you power. said without a lick of oh. damage we will fight it back oh look at these q the qw not even Excellent play coming out from the Bisons to clean up three. And Storm starts the shockwave in the back onto Sarah as well. I felt that from across my monitor orbital. That is, that's painful. And, and for UND, they didn't even want to pick a fight, right? Like they were just looking around the area. They didn't get dragon. They started to disengage. And Bison's just like, no, we got drag. We want more. We want a snowball. And VR UND. That that's a huge thing to set you even further behind. I don't think they have any control over this game anymore. Nope, it is it is gone. I'm sorry. This is and uh, again before things spiral even further out of control, which I expected to. Storm Stars is four zero zero on an Orion of all things. Like get <laughs> yeah. out of here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is ridiculous. Not just that. Forty CS up. You have been out of lane more than zero. Stop doing that. Amazing job so far. And Storm Stars, not <laughs> between Storm Stars and Green Guy, they not only held Harold mid, which they had to drop because it was running out of time, but they were also chunking out Zero. Zero can't even step up to try and escort Harold, or at least try and contest Storm Stars whatsoever. So Harold, which UND managed to get, that's off the table. Bison's the world's their oyster. They've already taken bot lane outer turret. Uh, they're rotating their bot lane into the mid lane right now, but. At the rate Josh is going as well, he's going to take that top side outer, and they can start grouping up very, very effectively to brute force mid lane outer. Oh, I don't even have to worry about mid lane. Josh is looking for that top side, also allowing themselves to rotate out. I mean, Josh has also done a fantastic job on their own, right? Off of the slight mistake on Pickle Me, uh, not wanting to ult, not wanting to expend some of that resource in the top side, getting a two kill lead as well as having the Gore Drinker in pocket and now having Caulfield's Warhammer, yeah. everything is leaning towards every single lane, not just on the bot side of the map, spiraling out of control, and it will only continue. So really, really oh. want to see how it breaks out. Sarah, just Sarah. one more spear. Oh, oh, out of range. Out of range of the pull out. But Washo is still available. Washo is still eating chunks, and I mean, that should be enough. Blade of the Rune King does work to shred. You know what? I salute Washo, because Sarah, she should have died right there. Yep. But because of the stun from Washo, it buys enough time for Sarah to get out. And your support, that's what you do every single time. You die oh. to keep your AD carry alive. Uh, well, Pickle Me doesn't really have anyone to help out. You do have Flash, you can get over the wall, thankfully. But if you didn't, that was a kill. I'm sorry, they have enough damage at this point. <laughs> I think he still had the opportunity to use all out as well on Without mm. Truth. Worst comes to worst, though that one was a bit finicky. The positioning was a little bit tough. And because Pickle Me almost got caught in rotation, Josh takes that outer top lane turret like we're talking about, and he's going to keep on hunting. I like how Pickle Me is just like, I just want to farm. I, I just want to get gold. Like, can you stop? Literally hopped over a wall, went back to lane, and immediately a croc jumps out of you. Like, jeez, stop. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> at least Pickle Me Elmo has, you know, it's, it's on brand because it's not Tickle Me Elmo. It's like he's been killed and now he's like getting pickled. So <laughs> it reminds me of, oh my gosh, there was a video of a poor Tickle Me Elmo actually having. Uh, I, I think they put it in front of a jet engine or something like that. Oh my gosh, that was horrifying. Uh, I felt so bad for Elmo at that point. I feel bad now too, because I mean, Pickle Me is getting shredded left, right, and center. And Harold dropped to push in on this mid inner as well. We're 16, 17 minutes in, yeah. and Bisons are just taking completely over this map. Now, of course, it is only game one of the best mm -hmm. of three, and as one-sided as this game one has been, it's always important to note that things can change a lot between games as well. So UND, I don't want to call this game over, but 
I think they might be thinking a little bit about, okay, how do we go forward? You know, yeah, in the and series. I, and that's what you have to do. Don't get us wrong, right? You have to yeah. do that at points. You have to realize when games have gone awry, and you have to be able to identify and fix weaknesses on the fly. So I don't think it's wrong. However, we still have to wait and see if anything goes wrong. We are waiting to see this next dragon coming up. It would be soul point for the side of Bison Green if they get this one, which I do believe is uh, Cloud. I'm I'm slow right now. Uh, it would be a Cloud Dragon to come oh. up. That is going to be ridiculous to pick up because that just means Bison Green get a run everywhere. <laughs> Wait, so the, the Dragon thing is bugged yes, again? Yes, okay. it is bugged. Good catch over because I was just going to see what's on I, 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 I had to look because I didn't see any extra bushes and I saw like a giant circle True. on the ground. I'm like, that should that should easily tell me what I need. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know my was, champions. I, I know that. <laughs> and, no, normally, we kind of discount Cloud a lot, but when you're this far ahead, like one of the nasty things about Cloud is that it lets, people, it lets you run people down far more effectively. And it also, it's also going to make Chaos Theory a lot harder. Uh, to lock down on this Callista already. And we're already talking about the fact that, hey, that's the Sandra's main goal now with Cleansed. Oh! And with tons of damage. <laughs> yeah, Zero's just not going to be able to lock down Callista whatsoever. Uh, that, that is a wrecking ball to the face, dude. That is yeah. that that is not just like a bowling ball. That is a full-on two-ton wrecking <laughs> ball that just popped you. And with Rabidons, that's just going to be like the world rolling at your face. Soul Point currently up. Please fix finally finished up their 40 stacks and is looking to try and get in range now. Like it, it's it's a little bit late, but at least you did it. Yeah, <laughs> they should have like a contractor or like demolisher uh, skin for Oriana. Yeah, it's really just like should. a wrecking ball that's moving around, and like when you out shockwave, like a building drops on them, something like that. Oh my it god, it would be very appropriate to this game. And they're just grouping <laughs> up on the side of Bison's. Like they took the dragon on on spawn pretty much, and now they're just looking to try and find a catch. Oh, I mean, and that catch could have been on Please Fix, but I like the fact that they're not, uh, I mean, they're not moving as quickly as I think they could, right? They have a significant gold lead. They have just about everything in their hand. They have a lot of tanks. They could force just about any objective that they want, like that one. Whoa. There's going to be the Shockwave. Please Fix should have died right there if they didn't flash. I don't think they should stick around. This is a dangerous spot no. to be in. Like, they are going to die. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and if we look at the mid lane as well, I mean, Josh is just also threatening Sarah the entire time, right? While all this is happening, people are distracted. UND can't pull numbers. And overall, we say that maybe Bison should be pushing harder. Let's remember, we are pre-20 minutes. There is oh, no... right, build. we are. What? Wait. <laughs> yeah. This is a 13K or, you know, just shy of that 13K gold lead for Bison's pre-20 minutes. So they're just waiting for Baron to spawn. Once they take Baron, that's when I'm going to start rushing oh Bison. Because at that point... You're on a timer. And for you and D, when you're this far behind, I almost want to see them just go for the Baron. You might get wiped. But to me, that's your best bet. Because if you wait for them to have Baron buff, your turrets, that's not safe for you to fight under. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they the problem is they also have to find a priority target. Because as much as you want to catch the ADC, Storm Stars, I think, is a much more difficult target that you need to lock down. Right? Currently, 4 0 0 has that. Uh, has a cinder in their back pocket. It, it is ridiculous damage output that you need to shut down very quickly. Oh. However, Chaos Theory is rolling Pickle. Pickle is deleted. Please fix does not oh my get any help. It is not with a shatter, <laughs> but a quiet burn into the night. It is pick by pick <laughs> by pick. Washo is the fourth to fall. The last one to live is zero. Yo, Bison's Baron's on the table! But no, they just, they saw blood and they just charged. Look at Green Guy. Green Guy was flashing left and right, just getting everywhere. And in the base, it's kind of ignoring the turrets just in order to be able to try and chip, push Zero off this bot side inhibitor whatsoever. And even with the short death timers, we're only 20 minutes in. U and D, they're not going to get up in time to defend. And if they don't coordinate the defense, if anybody dies, that could just be game. I, I think it really could be they tank the second tower, they're going to knock down another inhibitor, and it's going to be a problem if they choose to go win, which I don't think they will. You and D will okay. have a fight up their side. You can see here, they're backing away. They're going to go ahead. Uh, Bison Green saying, we, we could look at Baron. I mean, we're all still pretty healthy. Going to recall, they got a lot of gold in their pocket, and they're reset to make sure this is a clean game number one. Yeah, and Bison's can say, let's take a look at Baron, but... Remember earlier when I said UND, maybe go fight that Baron? Like, it's not a favorable fight, but it's the best shot you got. They don't even have that option, 
really anymore. If Bisons take their time, Supers will be pushing in mid. They'll be pushing in bot. And UND, they need a snap engage on a primary, on a critical target. Like you said, Stormstars or Chaos Theory. Uh, either of those. Anybody else? Doesn't matter. Time's not in their favor, and they probably won't even have the numbers advantage they need to be able to find that pick in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's it, again, it's really on Bison screen. Do they want to get cold or not? Do they want to step up? Does Storm Stars get a little bit fancy and step up, not use Slash or anything like that? Those are the questions that we're kind of watching for here. Zero. I, I was honestly, with how far ahead, I thought Josh was just going to destroy the Lasandra. Not going to happen here this time, as Baron is currently started up, AK on the H. <laughs> Without truth, just stepping up alone. A support zoning out a jungler. Okay, to be fair, Stormstar's ball was there to back up without truth, but still, that's the reality of the situation we're currently in. And now with that Baron, this is when I expect Bison to just push in. Oh, end game. oh, oh no, oh, oh no! Every Q is doing work, and they're gonna ult now. That's gonna be a shockwave on two. Doesn't do as much, but it allows the rest of the team to follow up. Last show goes crap. Now I'm in the crosshairs through the top side to go. The last remaining. Inhibitor tower and inhibitor is needed. Pickle trying to flash away up, jump right back in with the killer oh, instinct, leads them to their death. Zero and Pickle Me Elmo are alive, but I mean only for so much longer. Yeah, about as long as it takes for Bisons to just kind of push in and take your nexus. They've got supers, they've got burned up supers as well. And I want to highlight that Stormstars was never at any risk of dying from that engage. Hat stopwatch, hat flash. That's going to be a frozen tomb to seal your fate. We're going into game number two, 19 to two, Baron and Supers to close out game number one in Bison Green's favor. Okay, North Dakota State University handily wins game one overall. And with games like this, 20 to two in 24 minutes with a 20K goal difference at the end of it, it, that's just massive. If you're UND, you can't take anything from this game. You just kind of blank it out from your head and just say, go next, forget what happened there. And for Bison Green, what's terrifying is they just did that through their lanes. You know, like, like it's not like the draft was so amazing, you know, that they just dominated or whatever. It was just, they played better, pound for pound. <laughs> I, it does come down to that. And there are some times where, as casters, we try and analyze. We try and give as much as we can. There's a point, like you said, we just lay it out like it was. They were just better, and I like it. Taking a look here, you and D are going to try and find their way forward. And listen, the comp wasn't terrible. We'll see if they can execute at a much higher stake in game number two. Please don't go anywhere. NECC League of Legends will continue in just a bit. Hello, and welcome back, everyone. We are ready to go for game number two. And I mean, that was a statement. From Bison Green. I will say that right now, it was like I was watching Bison in some of the other games out there. We know some awesome names in the FGC, but my gosh, that was Bison's Green giving us a show, and you and D now have to be able to bounce back and say, what can we do? And here's the thing, when you sweep game one so convincingly, it has to be back of your head as well, that that was just a game. None of that carries over to game two. So for Bison Green, if they want to close this out nice and clean 2-0, they'll have to do it again. And if they do, then overall, I'll be very impressed. As for UND, they still have to swap things up going into game two. I, I don't think their draft was terrible. Yeah, you know what? Th that's going to happen. When you're, two when you're 20k down, those numbers, <laughs> yeah. not going to be accurate. Uh, I will say, though, two things stood out to me. One was, of course, the mid lane, the Lissandra so-called counter pick. There were two bad lanes for UND, and it was mid and bot. Bot, they couldn't do anything about it, right? You pick the Kaisa Leona, that's a strong duo. You got countered, it happened. But Lissandra's self-countering was a big issue that I need to see fixed in draft. I want to see Zero get a more comfortable lane so that we can actually see what he's capable of doing. And especially with the swap over, we do see that UND are on the red side. I believe we have also had a small roster shift as well. And so we'll see a little okay. bit of a dance and song there. Uh, still though, I do agree. Got to see some changes in the mid lane. and. If they do change specifically the champion, or if we get Lissandra, I want to see an appropriate amount of give from the team. Because uh, we talked about it a little bit, I think, during the break. The give of how much... I I'm trying to find the right word for it, right? The amount <laughs> of um, resources put into a Lissandra like that did not seem mm -hmm. to equate a whole lot. We want to see 
the proper amount given for the appropriate champion. That's fair. Yeah, I think the, the resources given to a top lane, which was uh, much more imbalanced and in question, could have influenced more things. Now, as you mentioned, there is a substitution player substitution coming through. Bison Green on the blue side, the top laner, their starting top laner, Puckus Wuggus, is back and he's going to be in that top lane. Now, top lane wasn't where the game blew open, though, for Bison Green. So I don't know if that change necessarily means anything to you and Deep Black at this point. We'll go ahead and see, of course, right now the Braum is banned away. Now, of course, we get to see information, but oh, Pugus yeah. Wuggus wants to bring it, and Pickle Me Elmo said the same. <laughs> this is one that we watched for. That is going to be a check of checks, if you will. Yeah, we just watched uh, Tota Top Laner pilot that Irelia to great effect, and we were like, oh, Pugus Wuggus picking up the Irelia. Okay, spicy. And Pickle Me Elmo was like, nope, I'm taking it, Darius. That, we were talking about wanting a counter. That's a great counter into the Irelia. And then the give, right? The uh, the uh, gentleman's agreement between the two junglers. Uh, Please six now piloting the Sejuani, and then the yeah. J four over to Green guy. Mid lane though, drastic difference. Take a look here. This is much more aggressive. The fact that we get the Corky coming out. Victor though was picked up in R four. The Corky was B four on the other side for Vice and Green. So a counter pick over to Storm Stars. That one is a little bit more priority heavy. A little bit more fun to watch, I would say. And I think we we got to see the bot lanes to understand oh, why the okay. mid lanes became what they did. Uh, Misfortune yep. picked up with a Sejuani. He's already massive team fighting. I don't care what support you kind of go with it. Uh, it's going to be an AOE support most likely to set them up. Uh, and on the other side, the, the Nila as well as the Tarek to come through as an answer. That is a potent lane combination, which can really punish Misfortune. Misfortune's all in is not that strong. She needs to chunk you down, poke you down first. Nila is having none of that. Nila is just going to be up and in her grill the entire time. And topple on top of that, the Cosmic Radiance coming in, it's, uh, yeah. it's a Tarek, right? Like, that was the whole thing. This combination is well known as a disgusting threat in any composition. This, again, yeah. still yells at me that we are looking at team fight. You take a look down the sure. board, both teams still want to fight in your face. How they're going to do it is going to be distinctly different. This is not going to be the cannibals that you and I talked about, right? This one has... I would say on both sides, a tiny bit more flexibility to work with. Yeah, and let's start with UND's composition a little bit because sure. I think they, we talked about the bare bones of you know, the Sejuani initiating for your Misfortune bullet time. Um, Morg wasn't the engaged support I was expecting for AoE, but still her ultimate is going to have a lot of impact if she can actually get in there, which shouldn't be that hard with the Sejuani. The Victor as well with AoE. So they're the, the more standard, typical, you know, all-in 5v5 team fight composition. On the other hand, Bison Green, their team fighting is a bit more adaptive. If you take an isolation, it's actually not as strong, but there's a lot of strong counter tools. Like you're saying, Cosmic Radiance without truth can actually nullify a lot of what Victor, what Misfortune wants to bring to the table. And the Corky Orbital, we're talking team fights. The Corky doesn't really fit the rest of what the what the rest of the team wants to do. It wants to sit yeah. back while the rest of the team is diving in. Sure, you've got the package you can engage with or kind of follow up with, but a lot of your damage is tied with your missiles, with the rockets, with the poke. And that to me was Bison's sort of insurance policy. They went, we'll pick a counter to your victor. We'll take something that you'll have problems engaging on. And if the team fight doesn't go perfectly, we still have other options. We still have other potential win cons we can use. And the fact of the matter is, we can talk about compositions all we want. We have to talk about the players piloting them because it's not just some sure. other person piloting that Corky. It's someone that had a little bit too much fun on the Orion. It is Storm Wars. Storm Wars had a ridiculous game. I mean, number one, we saw the damage coming out here. And I think you put it best. Corky is just a better mid lane poke champion than the Orianna. If you can do it on the Orianna, you should be able to do it with the Corky and then some. Yeah, his poke is uh, more annoying to deal with. It's not quite the same in that you can still block with minions, whereas you can't stop Orianna's ball. Uh, but he's also got, in a way, just as much all-in potential and is more dangerous because he's got better sustain damage than Orianna. So if Stormstars can get those sort of solo kills he was pulling off last game, the Corky's definitely going to be a much, much bigger problem. Now, th the question is whether he can do that. And we saw uh, Please Fix MMR last game, level 2 gank with J4, right? Trying to get the cheese down, trying to make that happen. Now... The shoes on the other foot. Can Green Guy actually successfully pull off the gank that Please Fix MMR wasn't quite able to convert? If you can get that lead for the Corky early, it's certainly going to be a problem. And Victor isn't that strong early, doesn't really have escapes either. No, not at all. But of course, there are some other threats that 
or at least green guy to go for will be drastically different. The top lane is where we're going to see. I left it best for last. I had to because this is what we're going to close out our intermission segment with. We got Norelia versus Darius. We got a sub coming in here. We got everything coming above. And then green guy's just like, I want to have fun. I want to have <laughs> I mean, you're looking at Aurelia and Darius, and you're saying there's no way this doesn't blow up at, like, level three, whatever levels they decide to fight at. Yeah, at this point, I don't even know if I really actually wants to fight, <laughs> especially <laughs> post six. And I'm kind of scared for Green Guy as well. It's like if you go up there and gank Pugus Wuggus, post six, there's a chance that you just die along with the Irelia. <laughs> Darius is infamous as a blender, not just because of the way he spins his axes, but because whatever you chuck in there just is going to die. Right? You're just going to make juice out of them. So I think if there was ever a game for Pickle Me Elmo to really pop off and become, you know, that Sitting Timo Incarnate like, meme that, you know, sometimes pops up with Elmo. This is the game for it. Like, Pico Miyamo can actually take over the game if he can just crush his lane and force attention up there. You know what? I would agree with you, and I would say that would be great for Adarius to pop off, but Pico Miyamo did one thing wrong. They ran teleport. They didn't run Flash Ghost. I'm so mad. I wanted that so much. I wanted it to work, but it is not. It is the team play factor. But I do agree. You take a look at the Darius. We know Adarius can run through just about anything. And on top of that, you have another champion that allows you to actually keep them close. I think, notoriously, the reason that Darius will run that Flash Ghost is because you have to stick to them. You have to keep the bleed on. You now have a Glacial Prison. You have the field open to you to quite literally just say, we're fine. So, keeping all that in mind, we are into the draft. And our first invade of the night. I love this uh -oh. setup here. Please fix. Not going to realize this is a problem. Oh. Good flash out though, but a support for a jungle slash big dub for Bison Screen. Keep in mind, that is not hex flash on without Ooh. truth. So there, that is a true flash committed. And that, if anything, tells me, please fix MMR. You can actually go and gank that bot lane instead. Now both Nila and Tarek don't have the best escapes outside of summoner spells. And with that flash down, that Tarek is vulnerable. Oh, they went ahead and recalled as well and said, hey, hey, I took like two damage. We do have a ward though, by the way, green guy. I love the fact that there's just a one ticker by him. So they were able to do a little bit more damage. They took away the ward. Uh, this will be a very dark jungle pathing for the side of UND. And please fix might not enjoy that factor, especially with the early aggression. But it is going to be stock standard. Once again, a simple brief start. Again, our timer at the top side is a little bit off. Just a heads up. Again, the bus will be coming up at the appropriate times in the game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we don't have a Herald buff, just straight up Baron. <laughs> Herald doesn't exist in this game, apparently. Okay, talking about Please Fix MMR and playing in the dark. So here's the thing with Citrani. Despite the fact that your damage has been tuned down a little bit, so you take a bit more damage while clearing because you don't kill the camps quite as fast, you're still pretty tanky. And you should be fine even if J4 invades you. He needs backup to kill you. Washo, no shield. Ooh, exhaust going down. Okay, we're good. We're good for right now. Yeah, and actually, it's without truth and Chaos Theory who lose that particular trade. Uh, Chaos taking a lot of damage, Washo. Mm, Wait, there's a jump in. Washo has to run away, and this is a problem. Good dub. Now they're going to try and jump in. Exhaust back and Chaos in space. But look at the damage. The minion the wave is going to even help out. Yes, you die, but you picked up the kill. And you're about to get a second. Sarah has to flash away now. Oh. Stun almost reaches. And if that was, that was a kill. Remember what I said? Without you, doesn't have Hex Flash. That came back to bite them. Pickle me. Elmo able to duck and weave. Actually dodging out everything without burning summoners. Oh, and the fact is they actually did pull. run the Flash Ghost. I lied. That's going to be a draw. Not two tower shots, though. If that were two, I think the turnaround would have been really, really bad. But look at that. I love it. Hey, give the ego. You didn't lose <laughs> Flash or Ghost. You are still standing strong. Yeah, and that's that's the fear. Right? We're talking about Darius post six. Pickle Me Elmo is doing this pre six. It only gets worse from here. And for Green Guy, it's not the end of the world. Like, it slowed down your jungle pathing a little bit, but. You're fine. My bigger worry is actually for Puggus Wuggus because now some of the EXP got leached a little bit and now there's a chance for Police Fix MMR to get a gank off in return. Mm, that was a good stun, but Pickle said, hey, you can't really do too much. I'm going to burn your flash. That's going to be a good W though. Reduce some of the damage, but the flash on the tower and the oh. final W takes it. Beauty of a job. Bleed is done. Pickle Me almost said, hey, you want to bring the pain. Let's do it. Let's fight. 
Yeah, and it's funny too because Pixel MMR was coming up for the gank, and Pixel Man was like, "No, don't! I do this on my own." And just mm -hmm. ran down Pug as well as even under Tart as well. And Pug as well as had Flash, but obviously wasn't expecting Pickle Me Elmo to go that hard for that kill. And if you're Pickle Me Elmo, definitely worth it. You take that every time. While we were talking about that, Green Guy and uh, Please Fix were actually duking over that bot, uh, the top side. Chris Scuttle on the bot side is taken thanks to the help of Without Truth and Chaos Theory. Wave pressuring back into Sarah and Watch Show as they are now Sitting there pretty happy. You can take a look at the CS differential. I don't think Sarah's been able to get back and get an extended buy after uh, after everything that went down. So just trying to keep steady pace here, ensure that nothing goes too far off to the side. Yeah, but this is coming slightly at the expense of minions as well. Without theory and Ooh. chaos, uh, without truth, pardon me, and chaos theory. Yeah, like they're just hard <laughs> pushing bad. this right now, and it's causing them to miss minions. They're getting pressure, but they're also vulnerable to ganks. They see please fix MMR coming. Does it matter though? Mm, possibly. I mean, without truth does have flash, but that's a good dodge on the knockup. Oh. They're just going to try and go in. They said, hey, our oh. death is secured. That's, that's going to be a double stun, though. That's more than enough. That's going to secure one. And they keep fighting. The exhaust comes once up again. Without now they're going to fight another auto attack. Without truth said, we are sacking our lives for these kills. Double kill for double kill. Everyone comes on that even. Did they need to fight that from the Bison's orbital? No, they did not. They saw Please Fix MMR coming, and they could have just left as soon as they saw it. But they opted for it, and they managed to make it two for two. They're fine with that, because the poke from the Misfortune is kind of annoying. If they can all in and keep trading like that, Chaos Theory is going to happily take that trade. And the best part for them is they're doing that right now without Cosmic Radiance. Once they have Cosmic Radiance, all of those fights that we're seeing... They just warm up for that, and they won't die with that invincibility. The turret won't even be able to save Sarah and Washo at that point. Well, you know Ooh. what turret won't save uh, Pugus Wugus is the top side. Pickle said, hey, hey, you better burn that flash. A simple ghost for flash too feels so good for Darius. Yeah, and Pickle Miyama already used flash earlier, so it will come back up sooner. Now, he's trying to zone and take advantage of this level 6 as well. Pugus Wugus can't step up and... It has to kind of try and thin the wave as well. There is the risk of a dive with that Noxian Guilty. Scary in its own right. It is uh, <laughs> you, one wrong step and you're dead once again. The fact though is Pickle Me does need to be a little bit aware of what's going on. You've pushed a huge wave, but Dragon's up and you know your jungler's on the bot side. So hey, just kind of keep that in your mind. You have a pink ward down as well to keep you safe. But really, there's not a care in your pocket. Look at that. Just It, it doesn't matter. Just burn, baby, burn. Pug is down yeah. to half once again. Yeah, and I was thinking Green Guy needs to try and cover uh, on mm -hmm. this top lane, but keep in mind, it's cover and not actually gank, because a gank would likely backfire. As I say that, Green Guy is clearing Scuttle. Now, the Scuttle is running up, and that's why he's piling top, but I'm curious to see if Green Guy actually thinks that he can get a gank up. He's not 6, doesn't even have Cataclysm yet. Nothing in the pocket, more just trying to clear out the vision. Is going to take that pink ward. Surprisingly, though, this bot side is going to be the main choice of play, because he six MMR already keeping themselves on the dragon it's going to be a solo dragon Keep everything else the same but it's spicy you can take a look mid lane currently being roamed in on or at least into the jungle as well everyone just kind of spacing in each other's face yeah and unfortunately sarah and washo they were pushing very very hard but i think uh -oh. chaos theory and without truth realize that something is up they don't oh have my vision. gosh they, they didn't monster. see they didn't see without no truth way. Oh my gosh, you didn't see the truth, you saw the lie. However, please fix is currently on the wrong side of the map, but you dashed down bot. That's smart choice because you knew the bot lane roamed up. Is and because of that, you are safe. Oh yeah, I was worried for Washo now, who was trying to reinforce P6 MMR, and I, I thought Bison's new, and that's why they pushed back so hard, P6 MMR. You're safe, you're safe, you're okay, you're okay. okay. Black Shield a little bit late. Uh, Washo, we won't, we won't hit you for that one. I mean, your jungler's alive. Yeah, I, I was actually worried that that was going to be a kill with how PC <laughs> MMR had to kind of right. loop back around and everything. Um, yeah, I think Chaos Theory and Without Truth might be kicking themselves a little bit for that. They do get the lane advantage, though. That was the price that Sarah and Washo paid to get that Dragon Pryo. Plates will go down. And hey, Without Truth and Chaos Theory are six. If Green Guy was around, they're going to go for these dives on single members. Washo and Sarah can no longer desync their backs anymore. I started thinking as a squad, gotta ensure that your backs are in the proper timer. And in itself will be interesting to watch right now. Level 6 in the back pocket for Sarah as well. If they do wish to go hard, 
mean, that might have been their only opportunity, but I mean, what more can you really do? You can't really call down that bullet time or anything like that. You just gotta, gotta play it as it is. Zero. Zero was trying to hold the wave as much as possible, and Storm was like, nah, we ain't doing this today. You're gonna, you're gonna have that cannon under tower. <laughs> Uh, we spoke about the fact that Corky isn't exactly Oriana. Minions can block it, but hey, oh, oh. Zero had no minions. Please fix him. Mar lands Ooh, it. Stormstar oh, barely what? flashes out. That should have been death. It feels like that. Feels like it should have been Stormstar's death. Yeah, that was really, really well played. But we said Victor's early damage is actually not amazing. Yeah, it's good burst, but it's not enough to kill the Corky. And now Stormstar's will still lose most of that wave. Uh, all of that wave, actually. Has TP, won't be able to get back in time. Uh, did pick up the lost chapter, though, and that's going to be interesting, because now both these mid laners have a lot of mana to spam. Oh, Sarah's on her own. Uh-oh, if Wazo shows, they dive. They, they absolutely will, and I think they've already shown, so... Yeah, you see the pings going down here. Hey, Vision is down. Washo is pretty much sitting and helping. Good smite coming out from Green Guy, but the smite is down, and that means no herald for them. Look at the focus, though. Chaos Theory and Without Truth actually walked away. Green Guy, this? I don't think you can do it, but you get the knockup at least. Stormstars is looking, but the buy oh. behind helps. And look at that. You get the kill. Zero is going to be out of lane, so you trade a herald for a life. Green Guy flashes over the wall. Maybe a flag and drag to catch Washo mm. as well. Finding though, tanked up by Storm Stars on the other side though, a secondary fight is working. The stacks though, the blades are gonna fight their way and Pickle Me Elmo has to get the skill quickly. The sun comes up, misses, and the exhaust comes down. This will secure their death. It's two kills for a Herald. Two deaths for a Herald, kind of worth it if you can maximize the Herald bot lane. Chaos Theory is getting run down by Sarah a little bit. Not what I expected. Uh, from this 1v1, and for, for the Bisons, I think they hesitated a little bit too long. They knew how it was being done. They just didn't expect the amount of damage and how quickly UND were actually able to take that one. I would love to see these teams team fight right now, because I feel like they've hit that sort of first threshold where the ultimates are up and available, and I almost feel like UND would win it if they could actually just force it. Stormstars isn't online, and if Chaos Theory doesn't leave that bot lane, they don't actually have that amazing AoE from Bisons right now. No. no, I mean, you can burst them out pretty quickly, and I mean, without truth as well, if you're not stunned up, then hey, then you can do the damage. But for right now, it is going to be quite quiet. Uh, I do appreciate, though, huge respect. Washo already picked up that, uh, that orb, the Grievous Wounds, coming in very, very early, which I think is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it's very helpful, especially against Nila, since their alt can also uh, help with the healing from without oh gosh, truth. Yeah. So. So much healing down there. <laughs> yeah. I also like the fact that she's got, uh, that Washo has stopwatch ready run as well. So he can actually throw his body in there, uh, use that ultimate, and then, you know, just stopwatch and buy time. It's not quite the cosmic radiance, but the stun in the middle of a team fight like that can be absolutely massive when everybody's in melee range. Mm -hmm. Of course, we might get a chance here because you can see the position. You called it right. This level six uh, ult up a couple components in the pocket. They have the ability to do so. Pugus Wugus as well has TP, so this could turn into a 5v4 around the dragon. But that's why Pickle Me Elmo is trying to keep everything close. Please Fix has to run away. Shield is broken as well. Dragon showing up, if it is, will only be the second of the game with a mountain in tow. It looks like it's granted to Bison's Green. They're instead looking in for this bot side. They're setting up the vision, and can they find this here? I, I'm, they've been posturing so long that I feel like I keep talking a little bit too long, but that's a call in. Please Fix does get the Black Shield, but there they go. Nyla ult goes down. Nila says, hey, oh, thank you very much. Copyright. Just in <gasps> time, though. They're barely going to survive, but the follow-up is strong. Cosmic Cataclysm radius. comes in. Doesn't get anyone. Everyone flashes away because of that. Without Truth is dead. In comes oh. the package. Package doesn't extend all the way back, though. And because of that, you run face first into that Dark Fighting Storm Shores, though. Takes it. And Police Fix MMR has to run away. You got your two kills. Looks like that's about all you're going to get. Because of that, it will be granted to Storm Stars. Kills in Sarah and Corky's pockets. Okay, so it ends up being fairly even with how the ending goes. But Obra, I want to draw attention to the mechanics of it and how the early part went. The 2v2 or the 3v3. Sarah and Washo, we are talking about the Soul Shackles, what it could do. We talked about the stopwatch. They both came in really handy. And that's the problem with Cosmic Radiance. It's great when you're using it proactively, but the channel time is so long and you can't use it reactively. If you do, all that damage comes down early and unfortunately the healing just wasn't enough to compensate for it. The moment Cosmic Radiance wore out, UND just won that 3v3. 
And we'll have to keep eyes on that one and really watch if that continues to escalate into the mid to late game. That's going to be... Oh, <laughs> I thought Washo was going to steal it. I thought that was going to be a small <laughs> take. But keeping eyes on it, this is going to be a Hextech Soul, which I love. Everyone loves. You get a lot of extra ability haste and hack speed. Not only that, the gates are going to be open to allow for quicker recalls and rotates around the map. Herald being dropped into the mid lane as well. Stormstar's not quite able to clear that. Actually might be in a spot Jeez. of trouble. Pugis, oh. I don't think you want this. <laughs> no, I, th I think they're coming up just to help out Stormstar's. But yeah, they, these teams, honestly, I, I hate saying this, but I I I'm always so excited for a fight, right? I'm sitting here like, let's please have a fight. Every single moment, <laughs> it feels like the teams are just, they're not really thinking about setting up too much. Yes, they'll get the vision down. Yes, they'll try and posture. But it feels like they are pulling at their leashes. They're like, please let us sight, please let us sight, please let us sight. And it's just that little inkling that tells them no. Well, I mean, if you have team fight compositions, you're gonna want to be able <laughs> to use them. So I think it makes a lot of sense. If anything, for UND, it makes a lot of sense. For Bison though, they need to be a bit more tempered with how they want to play this. If they do want a team fight because they don't have quite as much AOE at this point in the game and the scaling hasn't fully come online yet, then you want to soften them up first or make sure if you do engage, either you find priority targets or have greater numbers. There's a lot of conditions for them if they want to be able to kick this off. Oh my goodness, Chaos Theory is just eating all the poke. You eat one more Dark Binding, the Cosmic Radiance isn't going to come down fast enough. I'm just saying that much right now. Sure. That will be death. Fungus Wugga is still struggling in this offside, down about 20 CS. And you can see here, even with full stacks, this is this could be death. Pickle has enough. You do have to flush away from the Q. And oh. now you're going to throw your own ult out, but that is going to be the Vanguard denied. Pickle me Elmo getting riskier and riskier with those engages. Because <laughs> he's far ahead enough. He knows that. Oh, but oh, what yeah. Pugus doesn't know is please, please do here. this. <gasps> he canceled oh! the face! He okay, sorry. felt it. He felt a little bit of some aggression, and please fix was like, ah, dang it, they helped. I think it was more that Without Truth was on their way up, and they were like, your backup is here, you can relax, oh and you gosh. can try and bait. Yeah, they're going for Herald, and for all that pressure we were talking about, unfortunately, UND's a little bit slow on this one, and Bison, their eyes were on the objective, where UND's eyes were on the kills. Because of that, Another Herald in their pocket, I I think. No, no, no. First Herald. This is the first Herald of the game. My brain, I was this thinking is the game. Second Herald. UND dropped yeah. it mid. Did they? Yeah. And they pushed past. Oh, UND did pick it up. Ha! Don't worry. I know what's going on. I have not been asleep <laughs> at the wheel, I promise. Yes, you are correct. It's the first one for the Bisons, though. And that mm -hmm. should open up an opportunity. Zero needs to be extra careful right now. Flash might not be enough if they so decide. Yeah, and, and for Bison, there's no need to rush the Herald drop at all. You can hold it and use it for a more advantageous dragon take instead, where you can pressure a lot more. So I like the fact they didn't try and rush it. Um, the, the, the timer somehow has frozen in-game, so we are past the 14-minute mark. Plates have dropped oh, anyways. Yes. So, yeah, th there was absolutely no rush uh, to try and pressure. And Storm Stars has a favorable matchup against Zero anyways, so you don't need to rush them. I'd much rather see them try and break the bot lane open instead and unlock Chaos Theory and Without Truth to be able to roam to objectives easier. Also fight against that top side, and I mean, they'll get bot side easy here. Good binding to deny any further implications, but Pickle Me Elmo really Ooh. wants to tower down, is going to get it. Will it cost their life, though? They're not going to try and turn it around. Look at the damage, though. Vanguard's edge this? comes out. They're going to keep diving, but <laughs> no more Q resets, and Pugus Wuggus can't do anything. Pickle Me Elmo gets a tower for free, except for just a ghost. Oh, I can imagine my head so like, Pickle Me Elmo's going, na 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 you can't catch me. <laughs> Pop goes, right. run away. What are you going to do? And Blade of the Rune King is not completed for Pugus Wuggus either, so you don't have that persistent slow just yet to try and catch up even with it i don't think you're catching up to a ghost of darius so mm -mm. yeah a, a little bit rough and unfortunate herald as you mentioned though is still in the pocket of green guy they didn't use it bot they didn't have to i don't think they have to use it mid either they could if they want to rush it okay i was gonna think you want to just hold it to try and crack it off instead but no they're rushing mid instead I, I think they want to break it over for dragon coming up right they want that mid lane open so they can uh, have a bit more space to work with unfortunately it won't go down just a fraction left i think that's about 200 to 250 left on that tower binding over the wall though does catch without truth who has not been able to back sitting at level 9 with low hp to be a bit dangerous but because they have package they really want to utilize that advantage and the thing with Tarek low health is it's somewhat deceptive if Tarek's not tanking he'll have enough time for cosmic radiance Ooh, please fix oh. is caught out 
That's a jungle. That's flash. Okay. No good. way. <laughs> you are safe. You are safe. It's okay. Now they're going to turn around. Chaos getting the Cosmic Radiance. And I mean, it might come in a little bit later. Oh. But they're looking to dive. That's going to be a jump in. In goes the J4 to follow. A three man counter. But we're still no there. Exhaust keeps them low. Yes, you get the one for one trade. But the back line is so much worse. Zero coming out with some power in the back with the lasers. Flash oh, the catches the Corky. It is damage all around. A one for four for UND. The deadly victor flag. Or no, in what world <laughs> do we use those words? But Zero flanking around did so much damage. Caught out, finished off without truth. Killed Stormstars as well. And part of that, a lot of that responsibility was on Bison. They chose to dive in. There was hesitation after Cosmic Radiance came down. Either you all go in or you don't go in. It's only two and a half seconds of invulnerability. And one thing you have to remember about turrets is that, sure, it's not hurting you now. But turret damage ramps up the more hitch champions, and it continues to ramp up even while you're invincible. Not just that, we also want to keep in mind that 7-6 to six score is very, very different. Right now, UND, I do believe, are sitting on a very slight gold increase, maybe even more so. I would, I would posit about, uh, I want to say 2k or so more in the bucket. You can see it there, a little bit even in some ranges, but that top side, Pickle Me Elmo is quite literally carrying a bulk of that gold advantage. Yeah, but Pickle Me Elmo hasn't been involved in a lot of these fights, Orbital. He, he's not actually transferring that gold. He's just applying side lane pressure right now. That last fight that we saw happen, that came off everybody else. And Zero and Sarah still do a lot of damage. And I want to give more props to Sarah and Washo because that started with them finding the pick. And the bullet times from Sarah, which I was a little bit concerned about given the Cosmic Radiance and the ability to kind of stand safely at the back with this much threat, uh, has been the big difference in these team fights. So many little pieces that are slowly starting to come together. In a game plan worthy of a game number two, we are rounding into the latter stages here as everything. Oh, hey, we got it back. Look at that. We're good. Hey, okay. we got news. <laughs> we got news for you. I said it was 1K. It ain't 1K. It, it's really not. It's more like a fraction. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. Hey, I was so excited. I was so, so excited. It's not. Still, though, very close nonetheless. And I'm excited because that last fight gives them a boost of confidence. They're still looking for another, though. Bison Green feel that they can take a team fight. They just got to pick the right moment. And hey, they're in a bit of a power spike themselves as well, Stormstars, with the uh, Mirror Mana completed. The poke is good. They just need to land it before they engage. Pikumi almost just barely whiffs. If that had landed, you can bet your bottom dollar UND would have just hard engaged on it. <laughs> it's so many little tests, and I also uh, like the fact that I I'm waiting with better Vest. Stormstars and a Zero are both sitting off of the edge, like they don't want to fully engage, they want to poke, but they don't want to engage because they want to get ready for the TP, right? This Baron is so important to oh, both teams right now, and that's a drag over the wall. Are you kidding me? They found it! Cosmic Radius was not there in time! The green guy does go in, they do get one, Glacial goes a little again? bit wide, but I think it's a rundown. Pickle Me Elmo saying, please, 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 it is all on me. That's gonna be too dead for the price of oh, one. Flash. flash four to find Pugus Wuggus, who has flash, but can you get, you over, get over the wall? The wall? No, you <laughs> cannot. You are shredded. And that's a dub for UND as they are now in a significant pressure lead. Okay, okay. Th there's that lead you're talking about, Orodo. Pickle Miyamo finally made it to the fight, and boy, did he make a difference. Great hook over wall onto Chaos Theory, onto one of the big carries. And this Baron is well deserved. Green guy looking to attempt a steal. Do they have vision? Do they have a ward they can even drop in there? I, I don't think so. There's, there's not much. You're gonna have to try and guess this one as best as possible. I mean, it's got a vision board. He just jumped down. down. Yeah. All right. There you go. You jump oh, over. He oh, in. too much. Can you get he it? Out. He oh got my God! It. He got it! An early smite from Please Fix MMR. Please fix your smite. Stolen <laughs> by Green Guy. <laughs> oh, you know, game one. I can excuse Please Fix MMR for not getting it. That was against a Callista, but this time, <laughs> Green Guy went in blind. He had a vision board. Didn't even drop it. Just went. I. He just felt it through the forest and just hopped over that wall, <laughs> got it. That is huge because that keeps Bison Green in the game. The gold difference would have swung into the thousands in advantage of UND, but as it stands, we're back to the hundreds. <laughs> this is this is UND just giving us a show here. They give it up and then uh, Bison's just like, nah, 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 nah. We ain't doing this today. We are going to have a little bit of a circus play. Well done overall. I, I There is something to be said about junglers that are able to pull that off right I, I have to say that those that have what is it um 
thanks to the leash or something, there's there's an achievement to have so many. Like, if you do that multiple times, it's crazy, right? Right now, though, Police 6 MMR Ooh. running away. That's going to be a stun, though, on a target you weren't expecting. Watch out, has to flash away, and the follow-up could be insane. TP coming in, because Zero? Zero's alone. <laughs> Not this time. They're going to have the rest of their team, and they have to run for the hills to jump forward to flash. <laughs> but Chaos Theory takes it. Oh, man, when the flank goes wrong. Oh, gee. Yeah, we were just Look at the pig. Look at the pig. <laughs> They're like, what was that? Hey, I mean, it worked once for Zero. That that first Victor <laughs> flank was great. Second one, not amazing. Now, keep in mind, while all this is happening, Pickle Me Elmo has just been hard shoving the top lane and is about to take the inner turret. Puggus Wuggus is sat on a ward, doesn't know, but can't do anything. They need backup. I don't know if they find the kill here. Oh, I mean, they're going to okay, try. It's a dog pile of three. And, uh, <laughs> you know... You know, when you bring Chaos into the mix, suddenly Terrace doesn't look that strong. That's gonna be a jump in. Green guy, though, fighting off jungle on jungle. Washa should be able to get him out. I mean, I mean, Lee Six is pretty dang strong, right? Or I wouldn't Whoa. say strong, but tanky, at least. Lee Six MMR, I thought, like playing with fire by walking back into that dragon pit. I think that. <laughs> you know, Bison Greens are already starting to collapse. You know that you just lost Pickle Miyamo. You do not want that fight. Now, this is only the second drag of the game. For Bison Green. So, Orbital, at the rate we're going, with how even everything has been, buckle in, because this might be a long game. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way, right? I, uh, I, as many people know, I love Gathering Storm. I love playing mid lane controllers. I love scaling. My icon on Discord <laughs> is Vigar. Take a guess on how often I go to late game in any of my games. I love it, because it also adds into an element of the fights get super spicy and you can't tell who's going to come on on top. I am excited to see if these teams do almost request to get to that point of everyone hits level 16 or so. At the rate we're going, we probably will. But keep in mind that there's a lot of carries in this game. So mm -hmm. the deaths, the death timers are going to start becoming more significant. Not just because they become longer, but because of what teams can get in the interim. Uh, while you're dead. For now, though, no major objectives are up. Baron comes up in just under four minutes, while Dragon just over four minutes. So before that, I'm not expecting to see anything crazy. Teams should be just taking it safe. Heck, they don't even really need to get the ward vision down this early either. They should just be looking for farm, trying to catch as much CS so they can hit that next item breakpoint and try and spike for that next five in three minutes. No hasty moves, no crazy actions, just smartly farm up. That is the call of RMC, the minion that has seen it all. Of course, Police 6 MMR is being buddy walked around. That's going to be a Ooh. binding, though. Cosmic, uh, Cosmic Radiant is still a little bit late because that Neela is down. That is something that we talked about, right? If you don't use that ult right away, it's going to be a problem. However, the dive back, the no re-engage is powerful. And again, the Corky is a carry. That's going to be a double. Please 6 is getting burned. Red buff ticking away. One more hit could do it. Good flash over the wall. But man, are the bot lanes getting decimated. Both fall at 26, 27 minutes. Uh-oh, Pickle Me Elmo, though. This is a dangerous <laughs> spot. Run, run, run away. Please don't have that happen, Pickle Me. It, that's going to oh. be over the wall. Oh, my gosh. Pickle really, really does not want to die like this. Oh, even the have a choice. You might have to burn a summoner. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. okay. Not, not much further. Sacrifice on the other side, by the way, by Police 6 MMR. Yeah, execute, so no gold given over. And... Here's the thing, overall. That was cool. That was fun. That meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> yep. no there, there was nothing on the map. It was literally gold exchange between the two teams. <laughs> Pretty much. And I was actually counting how long it took for them to kill Chaos Theory. Now, Cosmic Radiance has a 2.5 second channel time. That kill took longer than two and a half seconds. So theoretically, Chaos Theory shouldn't be going down to just the bullet time, but without truth needs to be faster with that Cosmic Radiance. As soon as the end gauge comes in, you need to be popping that. Or or just kill the source of your annoyance. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was, I mean, that, that that was, was definitely less than 2.5 seconds. <laughs> I like that. That was, that was payback. That was a little bit of payback there. Taking a look, though, this will open up an opportunity to get uh, information down, which is something that we have not seen. We haven't really been able to talk about because we had a pretty bloody game. I think this has been a kill a minute so far. Yeah. The fact that we finally see wards down is something that we have not seen all game, right? Finally, a little invasion of sight lines for the likes of Bisons. Yeah. Okay, so we should clarify. We have seen wards come down, but they haven't been 
meaningful deep wards. A lot of it's mm -hmm. sort of skirmish wards. The teams have been struggling to really get into the enemy side of the map and get meaningful wards. I think Pickle Me almost the only one who's consistently on the other side of the map. But this time, with that big Baron objective, yeah, the teams are actually properly setting up and TPs are going to become really meaningful as well, especially <laughs> for Puggis Wagas. They've started up Baron. UND. Okay, I was going to say, do, do, they, do they know or are they guessing? <laughs> You know that. I don't like this, RMC. I like knowing who's going to get what. I don't like this. Oh my gosh. You took the teleporter. You're going to try and burn it down now. You know it's out there. The TP coming it's in. It's gone. Full tap on the wall. No, it's taking Greek guy gets it. Now the fight is here. On the back Puggis, line. Puggis? Everyone's getting melted. Puggis Wuggis plus Storm Stars destroys every carry. Please fix MMR. is running for their life. It looks like the Bisons <laughs> have found their opportunity. Five members with Baron alive. Wait, outer top is still standing? <laughs> Yes, uh, Puggus Wuggus has not had an amazing time, just saying. <laughs> you could have oh fooled me, gosh. that fight looked great for him. Please fix MMR is duking so well. Oh, <laughs> I'm sad. Uh, Please fix MMR played that so, so well, but Bison Gear is like, nah. <laughs> There's just too many of us here. This ain't happening. You ain't getting away. And now, unfortunately, that top side turret, that outer turret, that's standing gold. That Bison are now going to funnel in so that gold lead it's going to be massively inflated. That's three easy turrets for them to pick up. I mean, make, make it more so. I mean, I, I I don't know if they want to take it, though. Like you said, easy turrets are good. Dragon is up right now, though. So that, I think, is a good thing to go for. However, they just want to go for more kills. Right now, Pickle Me Elmo is in the middle. They're going to jump forward. Good heal coming out. Wow. And into the base you go. TP on the flag means you get the entire team. But yeah, this rotate out with... That amazing package should be another dragon to put Bison's on Soul Point. Yeah, it is Hextech Soul and it is Hextech Map. So teams can rush there. Please fix MMR are actually not taking the Hex Gates. And I think that might mean they don't get there in time. Okay, so they just had, they, they weren't going to take it. And I think Zero managed to snipe the blue as well. So yes. just defensive for UND for now. They recognize that, hey, there's still a lot of Baron buff to get there. I want to end the game too long and again as we said the scaling can work for either side you just hit 31 minutes or just about so and you need to hit those level 16 so taking a look at the advantages for bisons they also have a couple level 3 ults up i think that's actually everyone except for without truth on the other side you take a look sarah's having trouble p6 mmr is having trouble pickle me elmo is also having trouble they are basically saying we understand we cannot fight in some of these massive trades let's try and soak up enough but at least get one more level 3 ult ready. Yeah, and they'll probably be able to get enough time to hit level 16 unless somebody gets caught out. What worries me a little bit more is just what is UND scale? Like, what are they waiting for? If they're stalling out the game, who is the person we're looking at to be that timer? Victor skills up incredibly well, but Misfortune, she has a lot of penetration right now, a lot of lethality. It doesn't really get much better for her as this game goes on sure she'll do more damage to squishies but she's been struggling to hit storm stars and without truth has been getting more on point so it's all on zero and if you look at zero's kp right now he's got the lowest kill participation oh. Oh. when you're not even allowed to play the game this also hurts that is going to be a call in cosmic radiance comes down without you says why are we running guys i have invulnerability <laughs> they're going to follow up another stun comes out please like mmr has to run away they do survive i mean that is I want to say the lesser two evils that could have occurred. They lose the inhibitor tower and inhibitor. Yeah, the, the issue is I didn't quite see when Baron dropped and that Baron timer in the top right isn't accurate. So I don't know mm -hmm. if they managed to actually brute force the bulk of that without Baron. If they could do that in the bot lane orbital, they can pick a different lane and just do the exact same thing. If they go top, they'll have supers pushing bot. So they'll have even more pressure than they otherwise had when they took that first inhibitor. That is something that they really have to keep eyes on for the side of UND. They're being allowed to brute force. Oh, Time is running out. That's going to be another stun. Black Shield up a little bit late. At least you have 50% HP. Top lane, though, is not in their favor because of that. That push will not be exactly like you were talking about. Maybe getting that, uh, you, you know, the 4-1 or anything like that ready to go. Instead, it'll just be cut off the wave and then prep alone. This is getting... This is getting Bison's just like, okay, what can we really take right now? <laughs> like, what do we want to do? Well, for Bison's reset, spend that gold and just group up. Like I said, just go siege top. You've got supers pushing bot lane. And sure, Pickle Me Elmo can handle it, but Pickle Me Elmo doesn't have TP. And that wasn't a problem 
until now. When you're falling behind, when you're getting pressured in multiple lanes, suddenly that lack of a TP uh, does start to become a problem. And even in the mid lane, w one thing to note as well is I don't believe, I, I think this is still the case, I don't think they've changed it. Minion skill with your team's levels. Oh, Sarah. Okay, Sarah lives, but that's flashed down. If that happens again, Sarah's dead. Mm -hmm. And going back to the minions, I think you were onto something there, right? Yeah, so minion skill with your team's level. So if you're ahead, they will push anyway. So even though the mid lane push isn't going to be significant, it'll slowly stack up. So if Bisons can hold you to top and bot, that third wave will push for you anyways. So Bisons, they're set in a great position to siege. They really are, and the float now is just even better. You're trying to push out these two lanes to make sure that there is no chance at a steal on the back end. I mean, please fix last time was so, so happy. Or not so happy about that steal, and... Now green guy is just like, heh, how about you try it this time? Wards <laughs> all the way around, pink wards as well, but there is a little bit of a deep ward in the far back brush. One that is not going to be enabling as much as you would like, but it might be enough to at least get a scrap of information. Well, information is one thing, Orbital, but what can you do with it is the second part of that equation. And right now, I'm not sure what UND are looking to be able to pull off with that information. I feel like, yeah, when that happens, that's one rocket and Washo almost dies. One rocket and Sarah almost dies. Sarah at least has Edge of Night, but unfortunately for Washo, Black Shield ain't going to do much. Sure, you might survive with half your health, but another big one and you're dead. Oh, and the fact that you're even forced to come by, take a look at that. 400 HP, and look how fast Baron goes down. Ooh. Bison are just like, you don't they need really have anything. I, I mean, they tried, but that's just over the wall. And now, without Truth yeah. is saying, hey, you want to try and fight it? Good stun in the back line. Cosmic Radiance not done. Oh. And it wasn't used. It was used at the very last moment. So, hey, there's a kill potential. Oh. Look at the burn. That's going to be a kill. Follow up behind. Zero wants another. And look Wait, they want at the, kill the field. Still. It is going to be shut down. Oh, Chaos barely <laughs> survives for only a moment longer. They get the Baron. But UND say you forgot about the Victor flank. <laughs> the third time this game the victor flanks and this time it pays off dragon about to spawn as well so they're going to be able to pick up soul point and orbital they just don't want this game to end chaos <laughs> theory walked into the chaos storm i was mind blown by that you know what maybe that's why they call it chaos theory the theory is if there's a chaos storm i have to walk into it Maybe. I, I I wonder if they were also saying, hey, we're going to die anyway. Let's go ahead and try and get the kill back. Oh, I know, it's a steal! Are you kidding me? Great guy, get out alive. Come on, do it. No, oh. you died. But you go down as a mighty hero. The sealer, the thief that stole fire from the gods. Orbital, it's not just a dragon. It's soul. That was so <laughs> poor for UND, but it was soul for the side of Bisons. And that's Hex. Tech so the one that's gonna let them chase people who the one that's gonna control the speed of your enemy team. If you thought Storm Stars was hurting before, it's even worse now. An additional proc of damage, that zap of lightning. And how is UND supposed to engage onto this team when they're perma slow from poke? I just cannot believe what's going on right now. It is ridiculous. Time and Look time again. That. But look at this. This is where we're getting to that point. And, and I will say, it helps so much getting that soul. Right now, this might be enough yeah. to help out. Oh. And it does. The catch onto Zero. He is low. He is destroyed. He is dismantled. Cosmic Radiance comes out just in time That's to huge. find Tickle Me Elmo. The damage in the look back line. Theory. Chaos does not care. Welcome to the slaughter. Get whipped in the back. That is going to be the Bisons taking four and looking to end the game. The, the Chaos Theory, no Chaos Storm, no problem. Chaos Theory just dived 1v3. Cosmic Radiance wore off at the end. It did not even matter. The moment they got pulled in, that was GG. What did it take for Bisons to win a game? Apparently, they had to almost get wiped, but they are closing this out. 30-second death timers? I don't think they're up in time. No, they are not. This is looking like the end here. It is looking quite scary. And I mean, that's a dive in. This is the likes of Bison's yep. Green ringing the horns. They have made it home to the ranch. GG to Bison's Green. Okay, Orbital. Game two wasn't the cleanest. <laughs> but I did say I would be, you know, props to Bison's Green. I'd be impressed if they win the game two. It wasn't quite as clean, but it was still very, very impressive the way they managed to do it. I want to give props to UND, though. UND's game two was, I think, 
much closer. They had played that way from the start. Maybe we get a game three. They improved so much between the first two games. I got to agree. And a huge part of that was the almost uh, throwing caution to the wind. I think is the best way to put it. Gone were the safe lanes. Gone was the uh, Lissandra in the mid lane or anything like that. You went Darius. You went <laughs> Victor. You flanked with Victor. What are you thinking? Like that was, it, it was amazing. And I got to agree. However, there is another part of it. Bison's bit back hard. And one of yeah. the things is being able to adjust on the fly. That is the adjustments. Now, granted, there was a single player that I think deserves all the accolades for this game. Very, very well done to Green Guy. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I was actually thinking Storm Stars when you're setting that up. True. But no, true, Green, true. Green Guy's ganks are really good. I was actually thinking Storm Stars because it's. To me, Stormstars was the, the big one who kind of turned everything. And even in game one as well, Stormstars took over the Oriana. Game two, it was the Corky. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, production. <laughs> look at look at those numbers from Stormstars, man. You can say, oh, sure, you know, Pope champions, they always have inflated numbers. But Stormstars was diving into fights with packages without any fear whatsoever. So huge props to them. And small shout out to Chaos Theory as well, because the laning was really, really rough for Chaos Theory. We saw how badly a lot of that went. And they often say, you know, insanity, the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again. Well, Chaos Theory embraced insanity. He did the same thing over and over again, but with items, it started to work towards the end. Just watching Anila just say, screw your backline and go yeah. in and... 1v3 I'm, and pop. Yeah, I'm just, it almost makes you think that ADC might actually be worth playing, and then you play ADC and you definitely can't pull that off. So, taking a look at things, though, it was a great series, and we now seen two amazing teams fly at it. And, or, you know, four total. We've had two series here tonight. We still have more, I think. It's going to be a great mm -hmm. time. We have another series coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, you and I will be signing off here just shortly, and I believe we'll have Sophie and Henry to join us for the last series here tonight. So please don't go anywhere. The NECC League of Legends Week number one will continue after a short break.